This machinery video is going to be about cams. A cam is very similar to a crank slider in that its function is to convert rotational motion of the cam into translational reciprocating motion of the follower. It is possible to have an oscillating follower for a cam, but we're not covering that in this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a displacement diagram, which is a follower curve, based on the desired behavior at the end of the follower. And then from that diagram, I'll show you how to create the actual cam profile for three different styles of followers, knife edge follower, a roller follower, and a flat face follower. And each one's gonna look very different, but once you've created the knife edge profile, creating the other two is actually pretty quick and easy. And at the end of the video, we'll check the profiles and make sure that they would actually create a functioning cam. The procedure that I'll walk you through will always create a drawing, but it doesn't guarantee that the thing will actually work at the end. You still have to do a little bit of analysis. So we're starting with the given information with the minimum radius, which then added to the lift of two centimeters gives the maximum radius is gonna be six. SHM for simple harmonic motion, that's gonna be a sine wave. And then the dwell periods means that the profile is not gonna change. So we want the follower to actually maintain a constant height at those levels. To start off the displacement diagram, label your minimum height, maximum height on the Y axis, and then go ahead and place your angle markings on the horizontal axis, where I've color coded to help show it's a little clear. I'm using 15 degree increments because the polar graph paper that I'm gonna be using is labeled with a 15 degree increment. I'm starting off by plotting the easiest parts first, the dwells. The one along the top is gonna to start after 120 degrees, and the one at the end is gonna be the final 60 degrees. And I drew a sine wave here to help remind you just what a sine wave looks like. And so this simple harmonic motion rise is gonna look like this S-shaped increasing from the bottom of the valley to the top of the peak. And so it should look something kind of like that. Then the simple harmonic motion fall should look like the red portion of this sine wave from the top of the peak to the bottom of the valley. But since it's covered in only 90 degrees, it's gonna be squished together a little bit more than the last one was. All right, close enough for now, but we still need to actually label the points before we'll actually be able to plot. So I'll show quickly how to use this little half circle drawing on the left hand side as a visual guide to help make this plot. But you don't want to rely on the accuracy of your hand sketch, but you're actually going to want to use a calculator and do some trigonometry to find exact values. This first simple harmonic rise is broken up into eight different pieces. So I'm gonna cut this half circle into eight different pie pieces. So far, I have it cut in two to show that the middle is right at five, but I'll cut in half a couple more times. Cutting each piece in half now makes four 45 degree sections. And cutting each of those in half now creates eight pie pieces. Each one is gonna be 22.5 degrees. If my drawing were done perfectly, each of these incredibly faint, very hard to read yellow dashed lines should match up from the circular guide on the left to my S-shaped sine wave simple harmonic motion rise on the displacement diagram. And yeah, sure, they're close enough. This alone doesn't really help with making the cam profile all that much though. You actually need the real numerical values at each point. Well, the center one at 60 degrees is easy enough. That's five, it's right in the middle. But to find out where the 75 degree increment is, I'm gonna to need to find the length of this red height. And that height is gonna be one, which is the radius of this circle, because it goes from five in the middle to six on the top, so it's radius of one, and then sine of 22 degrees, because each of those pie pieces is 22 degrees, and a value of 5.38. The next point up, 22.5 times two is 45 degrees, and it's gonna be at 5.707. Add another 22.5 makes 67.5, and that finishes out the point at 115 degrees on the horizontal axis. So to get the points now at 15, 30, and 45 that we skipped over, just gonna be five minus sine of each angle. And it was certainly unnecessary to keep each of these numbers to three decimal places because I'm gonna get nowhere close to that in actual plotting accuracy, so one decimal place is probably enough actually for this. But as a last reminder, keep in mind that the diameter of that circle was two, which meant that the radius was one. If the radius of that circle were different, if it were two, like if we were going from a minimum radius of four up through a lift of four to a maximum radius of eight, then that would make the radius of this circular guide two. And in order to find this lowest point, it would be five minus two 
times sine of 67.5. So we have to insert the radius at that location. So why do we even do this in the first place? Why use simple harmonic motion instead of just a linear line, a straight line? And the answer to that is to make sure that the motion is smooth. A sine wave starts off tangent to the horizontal line. And this means that when the cam starts increasing or starts decreasing in its location, it will do so gently. And then when it reaches its next height, it will also settle in gently into its dwell. Having a linear change here is gonna result in a sudden jerk where the angle changes suddenly. Let's do one more half circle over on the other side as a visual guide for the simple harmonic motion fall. This time the fall is much steeper and I only have six 15 degree increments so I have to divide that half circle into just six pie pieces. 180 degrees for a half circle divided by six wedges it's cut into means that each wedge is gonna be a 30 degree angle. And if drawn perfectly, each of these dotted lines should all match up. And they don't quite because my drawing's not perfect, but it's close enough. And again, we're just gonna do the trigonometry to find out the exact numbers anyway. So again, we're using these 30 degree angles and 60 degree angles along with the radius of one to find the overall height at each location based on the height of each of those red lines. So the displacement diagram is now finished by adding all of these numbers at each of these points. And now all that's left is to plot. So if you don't already have polar graph paper, get some. For drawing cam profiles, polar graph paper is the absolute best way because it already has a bunch of the angles already marked. So I'm just gonna start off by drawing a very faint circle in yellow around at the minimum radius four centimeters and the maximum radius six centimeters. Each of the rings represents five millimeters or half a centimeter. I'm gonna add some angle markings as a visual guide and I'll match each of these angles to the angles on the displacement diagram. So I'll plot the easiest parts first, the two dwells. So from 300 to 360 degrees is at the minimum radius four and the other dwell is from 120 to 210 which was at the maximum radius of six. You don't have to label every point in between on the dwell but you should label the radius at each of the endpoints. So the 60 degree is at five, which is halfway in between the four and six rings. The 45 degree angle 4.62 is just barely outside that ring. The 4.29 is close to halfway in between the two rings. And the 4.28 is just barely beyond the lowest one. And just do your best to connect them as smoothly as you can. Added the next three points. And again, connect as smoothly as you can. To finish the drawing, I label all of the points for the simple harmonic fall and then connect the dots. And that's it. This is the cam profile for a knife edge follower. Okay, now suppose instead of a knife edge follower, you want to use a roller follower and we'll say a roller radius of one centimeter. In this case, each of these points that's already labeled as the knife edge line is going to serve as the bottom quadrant of the roller. So at the zero degree marker, you're gonna draw a circle that has its bottom quadrant at four, the same location as the knife edge follower. The center of the circle would be radius one above that. So then the top part of the circle would be at location six, which is one above the center. So I've started this first 120 degrees by adding red dots where the center of each of these circles will be, which is radius one further away than that knife edge point. So next, draw all of your circles using the red dots as the center and those purple dots as the lower quadrant. So as you can see, trying to draw this by hand, it's gonna be horrible. If you have access to a compass, not the measure north kind, the draw a circle kind, you're gonna wanna use that. Or if you wanna do this exercise in AutoCAD or some other digital modeling system, that's gonna work a lot better too. But this will still at least help to understand the principle, even if the drawing ends up being pretty awful. So I've gone through and finished drawing all the circles and the final cam profile is going to be tangent to all of these circles. And you can tell looking at it, that it's gonna be almost the same as the knife edge drawing. If we look at the dwells, the dwells will end up being exactly the same as the knife edge because since the radius isn't changing in those areas, the line tangent to each of those circles exactly matches that purple line. In areas where radius is increasing, a properly drawn circle for a roller follower should overlap the knife edge curve on the right hand side, which this little extra sketch should maybe help show a little bit more clearly. And so what this means is that if you use a roller follower with a cam designed for a knife edge follower, the roller follower will sit a little bit too high because it will actually make contact at that green point. So instead, the cam profile is gonna end up being a little bit smaller for a cam designed for a roller follower. And so this green line is gonna represent 
the roller follower cam profile, which will be slightly inside the purple knife edge profile. But just until it gets to 120, because then again at the dwell, the roller and knife edge profiles will be identical in that dwell period. We see the opposite effect during the fall period. When the roller is climbing downhill, climbing downhill, climbing downhill, when the roller is rolling downhill, a roller using a cam designed for a knife edge follower will sit too high because the left hand side, the trailing side, will be at too high of a level. And so again, on the decrease, this green line will be used for the roller profile, which is gonna be cut slightly into the knife edge profile to prevent the roller from sitting up too high due to making contact on the back edge. So roller profile and knife edge cam profile, very similar, exactly similar during the dwells, but during rises and falls, the roller profile will be slightly cut in to the knife edge profile. All right, now lastly, a flat face follower. And this one's probably easier to draw than the roller follower, but not nearly as easy as the knife edge was. A flat face follower is done essentially by cutting lines across your system. You know at zero degrees, there's gonna be a maximum height of four, but you don't know exactly where that point is. So you give yourself a horizontal line all the way across at that height of four. I can do the same thing at the bottom, but where I know that there's a height of six, and I know it's gonna be somewhere along that line, but I'm not sure where, so you just draw yourself a tangent line kind of all the way across your drawing, right, where both of these are at 90 degree angles to the center. I can do the same thing at 90 degrees and 270 by drawing vertical lines that are tangent to the center that go through the knife edge point. So I'm using that 5.71 in those 4.5 locations, again, in drawing tangent lines. So you can already start to see there's gonna be some differences between the original knife edge follower and this flat face follower because it looks like I'm already cutting through material. And to keep making more progress on this drawing, I'm just gonna be rotating my screen and continue to draw more horizontal and vertical lines that are tangent at each of these points. cam profile for the flat face follower is going to be along the inside of all these cuts. Similar to the roller follower, the flat face follower will also have to cut away material from the knife edge follower to avoid being too high during rises and falls. You can see for this sample drawing here that when the knife edge follower is just starting to climb, the flat face follower has already risen too high. And that's what results in a lot of these black lines cutting into the knife edge cam profile. The same thing can be seen on the downward fall, whereas a knife edge follower can fall very quickly, but the flat face follower is gonna fall more slowly. So in order to make the steeper drop, the cam profile is gonna have to cut into the material and you're gonna need a much smaller cam for the flat face follower. All right, final check is you wanna make sure that for a knife edge follower, there's no extremely steep vertical climbs. For a cam like this, what's really gonna happen is actually the system's just gonna bind and get stuck. So the knife edge can't just jump instantaneously upwards. And so the result of a cam of this design is really just gonna be to pinch the follower into that corner and the system's gonna lock itself. And so from our drawing, it looks like due to the simple harmonic motion shape and them being spread out over a good wide angle, the knife edge follower should probably behave fine. Roller followers would have about the same issue. And so if the knife edge is gonna be fine, the roller follower is probably fine too. For a flat-faced follower, what you're really interested in is undercutting. This is where you've got one line that you're cutting here, but then when you make these additional cuts at blue and green, you actually undercut that black line and make it so that you can never really reach that ultimate height. This is usually gonna occur at very steep climbs or very steep falls. We said that steep climbs and falls were a problem for knife edge followers because it could actually just get bound and locked. That's essentially impossible for a flat face follower. That's its main advantage is a flat face follower can't ever get bound because there's never a force applied sideways into it. It's only pushed up or down. But the downside of the flat face follower is that it's just physically impossible to design cams to climb very quickly 
or to fall very quickly. And the way you'll recognize this happening is this instance of undercutting where you have three cuts that form this sort of triangle or in other words where two cuts undercut the third and make it so that that third line can never actually be reached. If this video has helped you understand cam profiles and displacement diagrams and you think other students would benefit from seeing it, please hit the thumbs up so this video will appear higher in search and they can find it easier. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.